What is up, YouTube? And welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included, Season 3. The left-hand tank there that's just a temporary tank is being drained of its juices. That's one way of putting it. Uh, there's a lot of oil in there as well that will get processed into the oil drop. That will go straight down to get turned into petroleum. Well, petroleum and then plastic or fuel. But I think it's linked into the fuel line. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe and like the video to make sure you don't miss any in the future. There is a vote as well going on at the minute just to figure out who's watching what so I know what sort of videos to post. I am in the process of making or I'm in the middle of a game of uh, Minecraft hardcore modded. Uh, but likely that won't get posted on this channel unless anybody wants to see Minecraft. For now though, this game is clearly the favourite along with... Can't remember. Depends as well on when I was reading. Anyway, back to the game. Checking the plumbing now to make sure that there's no mishaps. I have, on occasion, thrown pipes to the wrong pipes. The That is the water storage you can see there. We're only about a third of the way through that first tank, so we're nowhere near. Uh, we have a water world, so if we ever have problems with water, as per last episode where we indeed did populate this, or at least get a... Yeah, what do you call that? Rocket platform, there we go. Down, and then dug it out a little bit just to see visually what was down there, but actually it's just all water. So if we go any further onto this asteroid, it's going to be a bit awkward because they're going to have to hold the breath an awful lot. I don't actually ever think we're going to need this much liquid though, and if we do, I'll just chuck a pump on there, pump it straight out of what it is. I'm not going to dig any deeper because I don't think we'll ever need that much water. Especially with us getting to the stage now of search for asteroids, we are now looking for specific items, but also the temporal shift to leave the galaxy. Just a caveat, before we carry on, there is a competition to draw, so I'm going to pass you over to the other map, and we'll get that drawn, and then straight back into this episode. Thank you very much, and welcome to the draw. So this is the draw of the $25 Steam voucher, or it's roughly 25 GBP from those from England. Uh, and all you have to do is comment on the thing. We had seven, so good luck to you all. Here we go. I did see a comment, by the way, about there's an easier way to do this. I'm sure there is, uh, but I'm still learning as we go. And the winner is Samuel Loomis9714. Congratulations to you. Reach out to me on Discord or newhotatlive.com and we'll sort about getting you that voucher over to Steam. Back over to the episode. Welcome back and congratulations to the winner. Just having to micromanage this a little bit. It does run out of carbon dioxide. It does use it up to a degree. The plants obviously need it to survive. Uh, so I am going to actually use the move it tool. You can move it. I'm going to move it up closer and sort that out a bit later on. But for now, we already have the pipe in place. So I'll just send some carbon dioxide down to keep it running. I'm not sure... At some point, you're going to have a fixed amount of the rovers, right? The little biobots. Because they only live for so long, and we're only making it as quick as we can either put in these the zombie spores and or the steel. Though steel's okay, 36 tonnes. So we're not going to issue with steel now. We've finally solved that problem. Um, and it's just a case of how quick the zombie spores can get pushed into the machine, and then the doctor come and deal with it. Checking the research. We're about halfway through that last item there for data banks. Now, I'm going to make an, uh, a comment here that I did forget a vital part, and that is there is a item uh, called the Orbital Surveyor, I think it is, that you can put inside your shuttles, and while they are in space, whether it be orbit or traveling, they gain data banks by consuming plastic and electricity, and I totally forgot about that which is why the research has come to a bit of a grinding halt. So don't forget about that yourselves. I won't be forgetting about that shortly, I'm sure. And then I'll be having multiple rockets in space doing research on that. All you have to do is make sure they've got a nice, comfortable little habitat, chuck one of their machines in there, make sure they've got a crap ton of plastic, and they're not going to run out of power, oxygen, water, or food. And you got they'll just continue to make um, data banks for you, and then when you have a decent amount, you can land them, use them, and send them back up. Uh, I believe it's five kilos of plastic or it might be 25 kilos of plastic per data bank and then power that's it so don't forget that it's going to take me a couple of episodes maybe to get there because for some reason i just totally forgot i have done it before but i don't know why i forgot maybe i was just 
a bit too sidetracked. Also, there are a lot of comments uh, regarding the helping me out with the larger habitats. Um, and thank you very much for the support there. There is indeed a mod called Rock Rocketry Expanded uh, that I will add at a later date. That does give one larger option in terms of um, the Fera station, so that the unit it gives it twice the speed. Uh, sorry, twice the size. However, it does require a alloy that I don't know how to make yet. It does, though, include many other rocket parts, including much larger cargos, solar panel noses, and a few other variants, as well as a laser drill core instead of the standard drill core that uses rad bolts as a power. Exciting stuff. Okay, so a bit of digging to do here, and this is for the farms. So as I've mentioned, I've been wanting to drastically increase the farming food production, specifically the actual type of food we're able to make. So we want to get to them end game items and get a much higher morale boost from them. There is only so much morale you can give them. Of course, increasing bedrooms, uh, giving them a singular bedroom and stuff like that is one option. But I did that in the last season, so I'm not giving them individual bedrooms in this one. I'm going to go for luxury barracks instead. Which I will need a few because the size of my rooms, the, remember the, 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 the luxury beds are four blocks wide. So instead of what I think eight is it? Seven or eight? Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, eight, bed, eight beds in them rooms. That will be reduced to I think six maximum. Um, but the idea here is that I'm also going to link the farms up to the main shaft of the base so that the guys can go in there the duplicates will be able to go in the farms and hold the breaths uh, just as an extra bonus for making sure the farms are running at 100 percent efficiency I, I will be also uh, adding in the repeat docks which are the sweet p docks the little uh, what do you call them they're like roombas the to be honest they just look like the little robotic hoovers uh, but they man monitor the farms as well and then we'll also put in with the fertilization that they require in a container so the sweepers fertilize them as well in the hopes that we can make some much more fancy foods uh, i'll be growing lettuce we'll be growing pincho peppers bristle berry which we're already growing but i'm going to move it up here and along with the fried mushrooms as well but we'll grow the mushrooms so this whole area you can see here needs to be dug out. It then needs to be built into farms and then the infrastructure for the automations need to be put in. It's a decent sized project, but it's a new project nevertheless. I am going to incorporate where I can the transport tubes as well. Now everything here on the left hand side is irrelevant um, because I am going to connect it to the main base. So that's all going to be ripped out. So don't worry about that we'll jump over to where we're doing something a bit more interesting. Due to a few items taking longer than expected and people and the duplicates doing weird, weird and wonderful things, I've just gone into the priority screen and I, I am, as you can see, going through everything and just making sure the duties are set to what I want them to be and what their expectation is on me so that they are prioritizing the things like farms and the critters. Farms, critters, and food, so kitchen, are the high priorities of the eights and nines. Anything and everything else should be more uh, sort of five or six. And the sevens are for the things that you want to just keep on top of, like emptying machines or doing uh, various different items. The medical hospitals as well, you can see they're high as well because, of course, that's quite important. Just micromanaging it a little bit, um, but I just want to make it so that when I select nine, it is one of the highest priorities. But also, if I select ten, uh, it is the highest priority. Making everything nine really does damage that quite a lot because you are competing with the priority set in the priorities tab along with the priority as a number. So if you set everything as nine and then try and get something done quick with 10 you'll find only half of them will go there the other half will stay on the nines because they have it's got a number of nine and then their priority is set to plus two 
That makes sense. So basically, it's plus 11. A couple of cycles later, and the digging has commenced. I'm not going to lie. I kind of uh, turned off the Atmos suits again. As you can see, that's why they're all falling nice and top top. Um, I set everybody to dig in. I set all the priorities to dig in. I, I basically just forced everybody to dig and do nothing else. They ignored farms, critters, everything. But there was a lot of digging to do there and a lot of liquids that I needed to drop down and either clean up with the mop or let it just fall down to the bottom of the map. I am going to then encase this in insulated tiles because the farms are quite susceptible to their own level of temperatures uh the bristle bristle berries are quite difficult actually because they're quite low in temperature but they need lights which create a lot of heat now i suppose you could put glass in between them um, and that would make that a lot easier but that sounds a bit too much to me i'd rather put a cooling loop in because cooling is something that we're paying a lot of attention to in this series using the electrostatic thermogenerators so that's fine. But then also you've got pincho peppers that need to be 40 plus degrees. You've got sleet wheat that needs to be negative five or colder. Um, and then other things in between. There is also the lettuce that we're going to grow. And it's one of the first times I've ever grown that as well. So that's new to me. But I want to try and get the luxury mushroom wraps done. So that's why I am going for that. Uh, and that requires the, the lettuce, which is one of the most complicated ones I've, I've had to deal with because it needs to be fertilized with oh there's a zombie guy there and this is the experience that you see now so they go in there they go into the test tube looking thing hopefully a doctor will turn up give them the vial that we've made and there you go instantly cured boom so although there is zombie spores lingering around uh, if we do get them, we can cure it as long as it's not too many. The reason that's happened, by the way, as in perfect example is because, like I said, to get that digging done, I turned off the Atmos suits. That means that they are out and about and there are zombie spores lingering in various different places simply because, well, I've missed a gap somewhere or a door's been left open or whatever it is. But I've let the zombie spores out and that's caused quite a significant problem. I could make the whole outside of the base chlorine which would stop any infections but then when i do the emergencies like i've just done where i need them to not have their atmos suits on so that everybody can crack on uh, they wouldn't do very well in that at all at least with carbon dioxide and polluted oxygen which is minimal you can see but it's there nevertheless uh, they can survive in that without having eye problems and all the other things they just have to hold the breath so as i said Farms, farms, farms. All of these are the hydroponics farms because we are going to need to give, well, give some of the crops a specific type of liquid, right? Whether it be water, polluted water, or like I said earlier, salt water. Some of them, they need nothing, but if they don't need anything, all you need to do is put pipes down, empty ones. As soon as you put the pipes on it, it makes them operational. If it does need a liquid, you can then uh, pipe them in. As I said, the right-hand side of the farms is going to be where it linking into that yellow main base item there, you can see. So they'll be able to go up there without wearing Atmo suits. The, the left-hand side then, that I'm currently setting up as they're going through, will be blocked off. And I will use that for cooling, heating, or basically getting the pipes up there to, to f do the um, farms, depending on whether they need water, polluted water, etc, etc. Now, this is a very slow way of doing it because they can't really build out until they've built the, the, the next tile, and then they build the next tile, and it, and it just keeps going. As a few get built, as you can see, there they can start building up. So you can see now it's gone twice as quick because they're building the ones above as well. It is a slowish process, but it needs to be done. There's no f fix to do it. There's no uh, glitch that I'm aware of to make it any faster. Uh, well, unless you're playing in sandbox and then you can just whack it in there, but we're not. So there we are. Um, so it'll take a bit of time. That's not a problem for you guys because you won't have to wait for it like I did. In the meantime, we need to do a load of other stuff anyway. You can see I'm diverting the power cable. Once I've diverted the power cable, that pipe, the transport pipe, you can see there, I am deleting that as well. That all needs ripping out because that is going to be a farm there and I want to make it better. 
Uh, caveat to that though, don't actually put the transit tube through the farm. It causes some weird ass bugs. I'm not sure if it's because it is modded. Normally you wouldn't be able to do it like that anyway, I don't think, with a vanilla version of the game. Uh, but instead what I'm going to do is change that pipe to just go up straight over the top of all the farms and down the other side. They travel so quick in it, it really doesn't matter. That whole left hand side of transport tube needs ripping out as well. Because, like I say, we're not going into that left-hand side. That's all going to be blocked off. Deleting a pipe, though, where somebody is stuck in it, you can see that he has glitched. Now, that is me trying to fix it because it is not my fault. He's glitched and he will eventually suffocate. So, I'm using the debug, uh, I think it's Alt-Tab, um, to teleport them. Uh, but it's not fixing it. He seems to be stuck in the pipe and there's not much I can do about it. Now, don't worry. If you do get this situation, all you need to do to fix it is one of two things. Either build the pipe where you deleted and he was. Put that in. And it will re-trigger him and go. Or you can delete the pipe that's next to it. Deconstruct the pipe that's next to it. And that will also fix it too. Now, at the minute, you can see that it doesn't seem to be working, but it will in time, so don't panic. Um, the teleporting wasn't working. It always remains in that same state where he's, like, crump, crimped down inside the pipe. So that was a bit annoying. But nobody died, so we're fine. And that's the guy you get from the quest, right, from that um, hermit quest. So don't want to lose him. It was cool beard. Right, so we have... What is that? Two, four, six, eight completed farms-ish. On the right-hand side, you can see there the base now extends up there. One set of ladders, one set of fireman's poles, a reapy dock in seven of them because the bottom one, for some reason, I brain farted and didn't build properly, so I'll need to fix that. Uh, on the far left-hand side of each farm, there is a sweep sweeper. Uh, it is not allowed to go through walls. It is set for the farm only. The left-hand side also has sealed doors that are insulated, but I'll just rip them out because there's literally no need for them to be there. There is a platform as well underneath the sweeper. That is because, of course, the sweeper means that you can't grow anything there. Anyway, one more block from that will need to come out. So that there's two blocks on that left-hand side. The first one, of course, for the sweeper, as I've just said. The second one will be for a chest, cupboard, whatever they're called, uh, in order to store whatever solid fertilizer is required for that specific farm allowing then for the sweepers to do the fertilization i just need the duplicates to drop it off and as long as i've got enough resources it shouldn't be too traumatic i am going to have to have two fields per in some cases so i'm going to have to have two mushroom farms uh, there will be two lettuce farms the bristle berries i think i can get away with one um, and the sleep wheat will be one as well, but we'll see how it goes and I'm kind of making it up as I go along All I know is that I had at one point like three million calories um, And now we're down to six hundred thousand. So the amount of duplicates we've got is Drastically eating into our food which you expect oxygen was fixed a long time ago So we're good there just need to make sure we have the infrastructure for food and again we're now getting the rocket age so we're going to need to be able to send them with a nice amount of decent food on the missions or the ones that are going to be going into space to do the research to get the data banks um they will of course need a lot of food to survive up in orbit for many many cycles Almost there, the doors on the left hand side, you can see I've locked out. I had to build the ladders up again to do that because I broke them down. You can see now there is also a chest as well. I was smarter and turned the sweeper on its side, which means that I only have to lose one block instead of two. So we gain one extra crop there. Um, the down where I'm just showing you now, there are quite a lot of empty rooms where I've ripped out the farms. That's fantastic because we can use that for bedrooms and or bathrooms. The, the reapy docks, as they're called, are up and running. They will just continue to go back and forwards until there's actually something to do. Now, they are the modded ones which are piped. So anything they do collect when they get back to their base station to charge, they will drop it off. That will go into the system. But also, there is a sweeper on there as well. And if I put a conveyor belt loader, that will do the same job. The idea here is that there's multiple ways of things happening so that the farms are grown, harvested, grown, harvested. There is no efficiency loss with the crops coming out of the farms. Whether a repeat 
does it, the green guy there you can see, whether a sweeper does it or whether a duplicate comes and does it, I don't care. I just need to know that it is being done and we're not going to run out of food. Hopefully by next episode this will be completed and we'll be able to see it in its full setups. Probably some heating where required, but we'll look at that. We are at time now, though, so I am going to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Any comments are welcome. As always, don't forget to subscribe to see more. Take care. Goodbye.